Atmospheric folk horror? Check. Point and click adventure? Check. Made by the obsession creator? Check. Let's do it. Hello everyone, this is Rin from Super Cat Punch and welcome to Carnival. This is another game by Jake, the uh, creator from Abscission. Oh no, I decided I don't want to play anymore. Well, thank you for coming. I hope I made you smile today. Bye. The water was brackish, cold as the grave. I don't like this. There was nothing in the distance, no visual marker to give me any idea of the scale of the gentle waves that surrounded me. What? What will you eat? Who's there? What will you eat? I don't like something from the water asking me what I'll eat. Show yourself. What will you eat? I'm not hungry. I already had breakfast. Oh no. The dream was gone as quickly as it had come. I like this text box. It's really nice. The lagoon. Lagoon. The lagoon slid past. <laughs> its swirling waters no doubt influencing my sleep. My destination, Venice, lay ahead. Venice is quite the city. <laughs> the lights of the city twinkled like pearl, a tiara nestled over the black velvet. It was a strange and unique city, as everyone knew, but laid out as it was against the oppressive clouds, it reminded him less of a metropolis and more of a gargantuan creature surfacing from the depths, casting about itself with a multitude of tiny, glittering eyes. Oh. Why is it so quiet? <laughs> Charlotte's letter still lay on my lap. I do not wish to hurt you, but I must look to the future rather than the past. The world is changing, and the spirit of it has embraced me. No more. No more today. Oh. So quickly, I know you're like, isn't this guy making Slayzak? So yes. Um, Jake said in a comment on the Ichio page for Carnival that Slayzak will take a much longer time, I guess due to the detail and the style and you know the higher level of time that it's just gonna take. But he has more stories that he wants to share, so he's gonna do some like low res games on the side. I mean, I'm all on board, so please by all means. <laughs> He says this one will be fully released probably later this year, so I'm all for it. Go right on ahead. Anything by you, I'm happy to play. The platform was relatively quiet. It would have no belt. No belt? I could speak English. It would have no belt been different <laughs> if the famous Venetian carnival hadn't been banned by Mussolini when he had consolidated power. It traditionally started in February, ending on Shrove Tuesday. Even though the tradition had already been dealt a blow when the Austrian king outlawed the celebration and masks in 1797, it had still been there below the surface, bubbling up within the 19th century in private engagements and artistic communes, and had apparently been a fascinating glimpse into the Middle Ages and Baroque Renaissance. Now, Venetian masks were simply decoration, a historical curiosity. Wasn't there a carnival mask in... in Slezak somewhere? I think there was at least, right? I'm just like picking at little things to be suspicious. But either way, this is cool. <laughs> there were still celebrations of a sort within Italy, but they had a sour edge to them, such as the distinctly anti Slavic Festa del Tremere, which had become little more than a mishmash of ancient tradition and current political thinking, all seen through the skewed lens of Mussolini's national fascist party. Very interesting, but for me, there was a different story to write. First things first, I needed to call my contact and then I could get to work. Okay. Two gentlemen. They look like. <laughs> hey, is this me? Is this me? Oh, I have a top hat! Not a top hat, but it looks like a. Kinda looks like a top hat, just shorter. What do you call those? A short hat? I'm sorry. They looked deep in conversation. Clearly they were discussing something important. There was no need to disturb them. But you look like... <laughs> you look like tall, tall guy from Abscission. What's his name? Um, it looks like Spencer and, and Stanhope. Am I wrong? <laughs> I wanna miss the fly around the ground. 
I picked up the flyer. Okay, can I look at the flyer? It was a flyer of Mussolini. On the back was written a quote. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. In English, remaining good on your... Remaining good all your life, this is the measure of true quality of the soul. An interesting quote for a man who ruled through violence and coercive power, although perhaps that was an opinion best kept to myself. Yeah, it might, it might be. I should probably save more often. I like the depth of the background over there, by the way. Like with the, the smoke blowing out of the, the engine, the steam engine. There was no answer. I slammed the phone into its receiver. It didn't do anything to you and ground my teeth. Perhaps the man had already set off and was simply running late. Or perhaps this contact was, was another charlatan. At least the fool in Rome had showed up. Let's go into the station, I guess. Oh! Gondolas were pure Venetian charm, long slender boats with flat bottoms to allow travelers through the shallow lagoon waters. This is this is a very nice green here. I like that water sound. <laughs> I like zone out, okay. Santa Lucia's station looked out over the Grand Canal and had originally been built on the site of a former con convent and church by the Austrian Empire. Mussolini was reportedly going to redesign this in its favored modernist style, and had asked famous rationalist architect Angelo Mazzoni to develop the plans. Mussolini had said, inactivity is death. It seemed there was no stopping progress, but I had come to Venice to see if that was the opinion of the people. Okay, I think all we can do is exit to the city now. Hello. Oh, it's a mannequin. Okay. It was the remains of a torn poster proclaim proclaiming. I can speak English today. Goodness gracious! We're in Italy now, and suddenly I cannot speak English. <laughs> Remember the Biennio Biennial Rosso. Something red. This was reference to the Red Biennium, a two-year period of labor militancy in 1919 to 20 in Italy, when workers buoyed. Boyed, boyed. I am not familiar with that word. <laughs> By communist ideals, took part in strikes, rural uprisings, and factory occupations. Okay, so anything else to look at? Shop window. The shop window was filled with interesting masks in many different colors. There appeared to be some standardization in different styles, rather than them all being individual. It would be interesting to look into the reasons behind this. You got real close to that mannequin. <laughs> the mannequin was huge, around six and a half feet tall. Wow. The mask was imposing. The eyes were inky caverns. Was the mannequin covered in black cloth? How much do you want to bet some eyes are going to open here? Senor? Aww. <laughs> Senor Maynard? The man's voice was cracked baritone. His face glowed in the light from the shop front. A good journey? Indeed, although the train arrived late, ten minutes. Is that so? I expected it was only you that noticed. I hope- I would hope not. You must be Mr. Barbieri. It is a pleasure to meet you. Likewise, senor. Please, call me Arduino. Come, my house is not far. You do not even have to cross the Grand Canal. Well, I say my house as if I am the owner, but there are others there. It is an apartmento, you know? I don't know if you can hear cat noises in the background, but they have awoken. <laughs> he seemed to possess a nervous energy that stood on the edge between excitement and panic. I want to mention the masks, because it is very curious. This mask is curious, very distinctive. Ah, oh, yes, the bow... Bauta? The oldest of the Venetian masks. From last century? <laughs> Try the 13th century, Mr. Maynard. The Bauta proper is actually the hood. The mask itself is simply called the face. Interesting. Come, there will be time enough to browse the mask shops tomorrow. Let's head back before it gets dark. Okay, uh, the streets seem quiet. 
Yes, but the edges are always quieter. The heart beats loudest in the center, yes? I suppose. It is strange not to hear any cars. There is only the rail bridge, Mr. Maynard. The bridge and the boats. The gondola, you know? It allows us to hear the waters. And the water's asking if you're hungry what you're gonna eat? <laughs> the water's just looking out for you. It's like, have you eaten today? Did you eat? What are you gonna have? I must admit it makes a welcome change to London. Venice has its own beast, Mr. Maynard. You will not find anywhere quite like it in the world. This fog really carries a chill. It is February, what do you expect, my friend? Come, we will soon warm you up with some Venetian hospitality. Maybe a spritz as we sit near the fire? A what now? Perhaps, I must admit I am exhausted. I may have an early night. Your choice, of course. Okay, I think I said everything, so let's go. Excellent. Onwards. It is here, the red door, Mr. Maynard. You know, I often forget to eat, and I do have people that are like, Hey, did you eat? What did you eat? Have you eaten three times? <laughs> I'm a lot better about it than I used to be, but I used to be, like, super bad about it, because I'd be busy all the time, I'd be working, like, a ton, and I'd just, like, forget to eat. <laughs> Don't do that. The four-story set of apartments was precariously leaning to the right, to the extent that it was almost touching the next building. And your apartment is... This is on the ground floor, Mr. Maynard. No need to worry. In any case, it is not so noticeable inside, I assure you. The magic of Venice. My head swam as I looked up at the teetering building. Arduino looked at me in the eyes. I think you need a rest, my friend. Yes, yes. The room was warm enough, well insulated from the cold. I felt my eyes drifting again, the eyelids closing ever slower. I needed to rest. What exploration! I like the foreground here. Chair. Perhaps all I needed was a sit down, maybe then- Oh! Sudden violins. I had fallen asleep again. All oh, this condition. I needed some light. Do you have narcolepsy? Okay, there's a candle. Let's light the candle. I needed something to light it with. Okay. Well, let's go look at the dresser. Or I could look in his suitcase. He probably has something in his suitcase. The drawer was filled with knickknacks and also a small matchbook. I decided to take the matches, they could be useful. <laughs> Sorry. It was a painting of a nobleman, though I couldn't place the likeness. No. The window looked out onto a canal that ran up the building wall. The waters gently lapped at the brickwork. Can I close the window? Okay. The window looked out over a small garden. It was most likely very expensive to devote valuable land to nature and was a welcome sight. I didn't need to get anything out of there at the moment. Okay, so let's go ahead and use the matchbook on the candle. It, okay, okay, alright. I was overthinking it. <laughs> Perhaps now was a good time to remind myself of the contacts so that I would be able to make the most out of my day tomorrow. List of contacts. Okay, so we have our accommodation guy, the local expert. We have Vincenzo, Enzo, and Dante. Remember, there may be other locals who are willing to discuss their opinion, but be mindful of politics. I would have a busy day tomorrow. I needed to get some sleep. It seemed that was all I did recently. A good sleep. Yes, as good as can be expected. I'm sorry. Your meaning? Was the bed not good? Oh, the bed was quite comfortable. I have a condition- Oh, he does have narcolepsy. Okay. I'm sorry, I, I do not know this. A sleeping condition. You may find I drift off when we're talking from time to time. 
drift like water? No, I may lose concentration. Please, just say my name and I should come back. As you wish. You can speak in Italian if you wish, I understand most words. Nonsense, I welcome a chance to speak English again. It is good to stretch my mind. You like cream in the coffee? I'm sorry I couldn't get any English tea. No cream, thank you. To tell you the truth, I've never been a fan of tea. That is absolutely preposterous. That is not allowed. Cats playing in the background, um, perhaps not also allowed at the moment, please? Oh, but you're very cute. Okay, you can keep playing. <laughs> it was a white lie, but I was hoping that I could find a way to relax the man. His hand had shook as he had poured the coffee, and the smile he was wearing seemed more of a rictus than an actual contentedness. Poor guy. Quite a selection of food, is this a normal Venetian fare? I found myself arranging the cutlery in lines as I did at home. I slid my hand back onto my leg to try and halt the action. It had always infuriated Charlotte, along with many of my other habits. Plucking wayward hairs and eyelashes, checking the time at regular intervals, fastidious neatness, and the criticism of her that came with it. She had tolerated it all to an extent, but nothing lasted forever. It is probably more extravagant than most, but food is my passion. I like to try new things and change my routine. Some of these meats are imported, salted in Bavaria. We have a man. There is a man who lives here too. A retired military man from, uh, Schwarze, the, the Black Forest. Yes. I like this music. It looks excellent. Won't you try some? I'm never especially hungry in the morning. I see. Oh, <laughs> He sighed, looking into the middle distance for a moment before taking a deep breath and turning his attention back to me. He probably... he probably put so much effort into that. <laughs> so, let us talk about Venice. You are surely here because of the new road, see? I must say, it will be hard to spend a lot of the time with people over the next few days. It is a busy time. I explained as much to the man, uh, Signor Dawson. He insisted, though, so here you are. Here I am. I lifted the coffee cup in a salute. Arduino didn't return the gesture, instead looking me in the eye. Are you guys having fun? You don't have to stay, you know. Part of a smile still lingered, though it was visibly cracking. I hope this is not an inconvenience? Uh, no, of course not. You are welcome for as long as you wish to remain. Excellent. I, I was wondering if I could start my story with interviewing you. Shall we get the ball rolling? Ball? <laughs> uh, sorry, it's a British saying. It simply means getting started. Ah, I have not heard of this. <laughs> of course, my friend, to ask your questions. Very well. Have you lived in Venice all of your life? From first breath, Senor Maynard. You won't find a more devoted Venetian in the city. I see. And has the city changed much in your time here? Changed? You see, there's these strange sounds sometimes I hear from behind the fireplace. It sounds like these small things playing, interrupting in the background. Well, the most obvious example would be the regime change. Mussolini is, uh, in some people's eyes, quite the forward thinker. Others call him a dispo. Surely the change in government has been felt here? Venice will always be Venice. I cannot speak for the rest of Italy, but there are certain things about Venice that will never change. Such as... the water. Venetians are born above the waves. It's in our blood. We also value life. We celebrate. We know how to enjoy. These things are important no matter what Il Doge may say. How does Venice compare in your eyes to the rest of Italy? I wouldn't know. I have never left. You've never left the Veneto region? Or... Venice. I have never left the lagoon. Interesting. Why is that? The man smiled widely. Why would I? What is out there that isn't here? Italy is a wonderful country. Surely it is a privilege to live in such a vibrant place. I am privileged to be Venetian. 
not Italian. The man pursed his lips tightly. You clearly have pride in your heritage. Just so. What is your reaction to the road bridge that will be completed next year, linking Venice to Mestra? I do not like the idea. He sniffed. Getting detailed answers out of the man was difficult. Why is that? Because change is not necessary. But surely the economic benefits are a strong argument for the road bridge being the future of the city? Mr. Maynard, please don't take my words in the wrong manner. His style of speaking English was precise, but some of his sentences seemed alien in their formation. I am no fool. I can see the reasoning for roads and for money. I am sure that some of the younger Venetians would appreciate the idea, but I simply do not want the change. That is as simple as I can state it. If you dilute a fine wine with water, it becomes lost. Sometimes, being contained is a blessing. Mussolini can go away. A risky sentiment in these times, but perhaps Arduino was too old to care. He suddenly leaned back into his seat and sighed, suddenly seeming a lot older than he had before. His final words have provided an obvious end to the conversation and an end to the questions. Eventually, the Venetian reached for his breakfast again and began to eat listlessly, carrying a shadow of his former energy. Outside, the wind carried a lashing raindrops against the glass. The glass? <laughs> I could hear the man's teeth as they bit their way through the bread and fruit. The silence soon became too much for me. This man, the German, you said lives on the top floor? See, si, Senor Weber, you wish to speak with him? Yes, I am here to get the opinions of Venetians, but I would be very interested in seeing an outsider's view also. It would provide an interesting contrast to the beast. As you wish. He lives on the top floor, I'm sure he will welcome a guest. Thank you, and of course I wish to hear your own views again, but perhaps another day. I'm sure the paper chose wisely when they contacted you. They did. I know everything about Venice. Everything. Thank you. You are welcome, my friend. I hope you have a good day. Munch, munch, munch. Arduino said that Herr Weber lived on the top floor. It was early, but perhaps he would be up. It was worth a try. Okay, so this is my room. I'm not sure if that was supposed to happen again, but... <laughs> Bunch. I had already spoken to Arduino. I needed to have a different view. I could always speak to him at dinner time. Oh, you can just leave if you want to. Oops. Witch! Little rat! Murderer! Be off with you! Keep away or you'll get the plague from her. She's a witch. A dirty little witch. She killed her own mother when she was born. But Oh, oh. All right. The Babao will come and take you away. The Babao. What did he mean? Are you all right? What's your name? Oh. After staring at me with her chestnut eyes, she disappeared into the shadows. There's something touching my toe. I think it's a Loki. If it's not a Loki, uh... It's a Loki, okay. <laughs> Disappeared, okay. I had arranged to meet Don Vincenzo Conti, priest and expert on local history, at the Piazza San Marco. That should be my first destination. Uh, actually, I would like to go back because I didn't mean to, uh... I didn't mean to... <laughs> leave. I think this is where I am, right? Yes. Where's my guy? Uh... Did I- did I break something? Uh-oh. Can I go to the map? <laughs> oh no! 
Uh, let me try saving here on a different file. Uh, we'll name this Carnival 2. Uh, and I'll try to load and see if it... I don't think it worked. I think I broke it. <laughs> uh, let's try one more time. Nope, okay, I broke it. I forgot I need to save like a lot more than I do in games and I just don't for some reason. <laughs> I will get back to where I was and we will finish up the demo next time, question mark? I'm not quite sure how long the demo is, but... I, I see you. You can't hide from me. I see you and your little cameo. Mm -hmm. But I am liking this so far. I love the setting. I have been to Venice. I didn't, I didn't really like it that much, but I do... It, it wasn't for the city itself. The city was beautiful. The city's great. Um, the city itself is great. <laughs> I, I think the setting of the game is really nice. I think the time period is going to be very interesting, and I want to I wanna see more. Um, I don't know how I feel about the water monster yet, but that's just a me problem. <laughs> so I hope I made you smile today, and I will see you next time. Bye! Bye!